I'm doing a follow-up session for a client. If you're interested in checking out the previous sessions, check the description. There's going to be links in there. This client's name is Jennifer. And I'm going to go ahead and read Jennifer's goals. There's a lot um, to be said. She shares some feedback on how she's doing after the last session. The last session was pretty intense. I mean, it was really intense. It was about past lives and soul trauma. And we were heal healing a lot of... Um, intense stuff like it's hard to put words into it you just need to watch it and then you will get what i mean okay there's even a, a reflection of a an alien being that i mean it was it was totally surreal it was a totally surreal experience and anybody who's what you know when you're watching these client sessions these sessions can also reach parts of your own soul because we're all connected to each other. We all carry vulnerability. So if you're carrying similar vi vibrational vulnerability that I'm healing in this client, it can also heal it in you. So be sure to subscribe, okay? Um, and enjoy future postings or just skim through all the old videos and see if there's something that um, interests you because these sessions will help you, okay? Not just the client, but everybody who's watching. All right, so I just said all that. There's a lot to read here, so I'm going to read it, and then we're going to get started, okay? All right, so um, I'm going to say one more thing. <laughs> Jennifer was mentioning, too, um, don't be shy to post in the comments because she really enjoys reading what you guys have to share, and it just gives her more feedback to work with on herself and just helps it to feel more of a shared experience for her. So don't be shy, okay? This is where we're all together. This is like a unity consciousness moment here. In this client session, we're all participating in the experience and sharing in the experience together. So, all right, I'm going to read Jennifer's goals and then I'm going to get started. Okay, it says, holy cow, Abby. The last session, energy healing, past life, soul trauma, completed on 8-10-2020 was intense. With this session, I was struck once again by the extremely vivid images and details you share of the journeys you do. I was right there with you, as I always am, experiencing them with you because of your beautiful gift for sharing what you experience. It's incredible. And this journey session in particular was so incredible. I followed along with everything and I let go of everything. I experienced an immediate deep release when I watched the session. And in the weeks that followed, I could feel a lot more energy purging continuing to happen. And now I just feel lighter and lighter and lighter. This session was so amazing and necessary for my soul. Thank you so much, Abby. Thank you so much too, Jennifer, for sharing that and just the opportunity to work with you. Thank you very much. All right, so you say, I was also inspired to do a, this is pronounced Ho'oponopono meditation. I'll say that one more time. Ho'oponopono meditation, okay? Dedicated to forgiving myself. The creepy red dude in the previous sessions and all others toward which my soul has felt anger and resentment. I recommend this meditation to everyone. What a profoundly cathartic experience that was. I can't even fully describe just how much I've been transforming in my life, in my life right now. And my life is transforming right along with me. It's all been happening so fast without me doing anything to make it happen. On one level, I know that's what happens when you release old energy and raise your vibrational frequency, but experiencing it is just indescribably beautiful. This is the life I am living now, and I still can't quite believe it. I'm so happy. This is what I always wanted, and I have it. And even more amazingly, it keeps getting better. I want this for everyone, Abby, and for your work, and, and your work helps all of us with this. Please continue to shine your bright, beautiful light. Your work is healing the world. I'm so grateful for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay, so my goals for our fourth session are, so with all the changes I've been experiencing, I'm feeling inspired to show myself more and more love by doing things that make me feel happy and taking better care of myself, etc. But I'm noticing some resistance in taking action on some of the inspirations. I'd love your help with this, Abby. Okay. As always, p please feel free to share the work you do for me on YouTube, to use my first name, and to use any part of this message you find helpful in the video. Lots of love and light and gratitude, Jennifer. Okay. All right, so your goals for this session 
You're wanting to show yourself more and more love by doing things that make you feel happy and taking better care of yourself. And you say, I'm noticing some resistance and taking action on some of the inspirations. Okay. I mean, this is getting like, there's a, there's definitely an energy shift going on here. You have so many beautiful, bright things to say. When I read your goals for the session, it feels like uh, we're moving into a more serious note. So why is there resistance in taking action on some of the inspirations that will help you take better care of yourself and do the things that make you feel happy? Hmm. Okay. I'm going to relax now and get started. Thank you all for participating in this, this beautiful introduction. I'm going to go right into the session now. Hmm. Okay. It's pretty tight as far as breathing through it. There's green spots and red spots and the background is like a brownish color. And this is pretty hard on my heart. And it's almost like my nose is forced to touch this spotted image. And I'm having to stand very still. Kind of reminds me of an old um, one one room class classroom, and they draw a circle on the chalkboard, and you have to stand there with your nose in the circle, and and that's your timeout experience. It feels like I'm forced to put my nose onto a circle that's kind of a brownish smudge, and then it has very noticeable green and red spots on it. It's really hard on my heart to do this. It's kind of got some. Um, some pull on the throat as well. There's pull on the third eye. I mean, this is you are forced to stand here. You are forced to hold still. You're forced to put your nose into this circle. This is getting very concerning to me. The assignment for you today is... You're on timeout. You're punished for being yourself. And now you're going to, as instructed, do what I tell you to do and put your nose in the circle so everybody can see you. So everybody can see how you being yourself is not appropriate. It's about shaming. There's a lot of energy about shaming and there's, I mean, the frequency of what is a strict behavior that is instructing you to embarrass yourself in front of everybody for being yourself, which is then considered inappropriate to teach you the way of being human, to teach you how to be an appropriate human. This is a, a really difficult friction in your energy field. You have deeper selves that are trying to understand what is the cookie cutter human and how to stand in line with the cookie cutter human, but really questioning it, really questioning this. But you can't get your nose um, off the circle. I mean, it's taking this image and paralleling it with a one-room schoolhouse and you're a kid, not with the dunce hat on, but with your nose in the circle and you're standing there and everybody's watching you. And you are <clears throat> a representative now of what happens to kids who don't become cookie-cutter children, who don't follow the rules, the very strict rules of appropriate behavior. It's taking your way away your individuality. 
It's stripping you of what makes you unique in your own self-expression. It's degrading of your unique self. And it's degrading of your inner child. What's interesting is the child doesn't... The child does as instructed. A child is processing what this means. Why is this happening to me? It's no different than a, a mother animal nipping her child to help the child understand how to survive. And so this, this method is teaching the children then how to survive in our world. And how to be successful in our world. To be successful in our world, then you have to follow these strict rules of behavior. You have to be in control of yourself. You have to know the appropriate time to speak and not to speak. You have to learn manners. You have to learn empathy even. How to treat other people. You have to learn the lessons of our education system. To read, to write, to do math. This process is to create human beings of a certain accomplishment that help create the appearance of intelligent race of beings. <laughs> I mean, this is respecting ourselves and respecting others the hard way, learning it at a young age. I'm also seeing this from the angle, which I saw in the first place, of degrade how that degrading that is in stripping of individuality. So we're conflicted in society as to how to be unique individuals, but how to carry what is a self-respect, respect of others, and intelligence. And can we evolve without all this harsh punishment? Can we evolve as a society without all this harsh punishment in order to become the cookie-cutter people that are perfect for this world? There's major conflict. Your soul is really exploring this right now. I mean, your inner self is just like looking at this topic right now and how you relate to it. How do we build a society that is different but still creates something of the same result but without all the harsh punishment, without all the shame and embarrassment, the ridicule, the stripping of your individuality? How do we do it without pain and suffering? So the question is, how is this message then, which is a response to your goals, what is it causing you to resist self-love? This Doing the things that make you happy. Resisting that inspiration. This is what's coming up. This is what your higher self wants you to look at in response to your goals. But I'm also clearing this energy out of your energy field. Because you long to be okay being your unique individual self. But you, there's, you, there's a part of you that wants to make an impact in the world to help the world. As well to help set people free from their own self-imprisonment. But where, when does that begin? When does self-imprisonment begin? If we're looking at this image of the past, um, it begins at a young age. When you're taught how to survive in this world. And then it takes shame, it takes embarrassment, it takes um, a strict teacher to teach you proper behavior. Is that true? Is that true? The world is not as strict as it used to be. The world is much different as well than it used to be. Let's see what happens next. I'm having to go back into my nose and this 
is put into this circle with the different spots, okay? And I can't move back. I can't unlodge myself from this position. I'm stiff and I'm forced. I'm forced into this. I can't move. I can't set myself free. It's getting very rigid around the throat, the neck, the head. Oh, man. Okay, there's an internal screaming in the mind. There's... It's like a panic attack. <sighs> this, it kind of makes me think of, um, you learn it out enough times how to be in control of yourself. That somehow in life, um, that created trauma beneath the surface. You have to be in control of yourself. 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 Over and 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 over. So you just absorb the program, you become in control of yourself, but yet somehow that created a trauma that is unresolved trauma beneath the surface of what became, I've learned how to become in control of myself. So the trauma still lingers there and it's turning into a panic attack of stop it, stop it, stop telling me what to do. That's what's coming out right now. I mean, that's like literally what's coming out right now. Stop it! Like, uh, the head is getting so loud with these, this program, this, this responsibility, this strictness, this, this, this is how you stay in line. This is how you do it right. And it's, it's so loud. It's, it's creating a self-destruction. It's traumatized. It's fascinating because do you understand what this could be saying, potentially? That when we are raising our children with these constant expectations, repeat, 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 repeat. This is how you're appropriate. This is how you stand in line. This is how you become the cookie cutter person. This is how, this is how, this how, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is. And now you do it, 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 do it in life. But how do you become yourself in all of this? How to become actually you after all of this molding and shaping relentless and beneath the surface which is the cookie cutter person who's done it right is this noise is this trauma that nobody would ever expect would ever be there because is the kid traumatized as they're trying to understand how to not have that experience again with the nose in the circle and the ridicule and the shame yeah they're freaking traumatized yeah, they're traumatized. There is, this is trauma. This is a absolute trauma. I mean, that's what this is saying. This energy, this is whole conversation is looking at trauma in you. Trauma in potentially what is your bloodline? It could be trauma in our collective that you too are processing within yourself as an empath or, or just a part of our world. Because we are helping each other processing the suffering of the planet. We are all carrying it. We are all processing it in different ways. And some of us are more sensitive to the process of it than others. But we're all a part of each other. You know, we're all a part of each other. So let's see what happens next year. My God, I mean, this is like a balloon that's about to pop. It's like push to the limits, push to the limits, push to the limits, push to the limits. It's about to blow up. So the question is, do we make it get louder until it pops? Or do we suppress it? Do we silence it? Do we just let it go? Do you understand what I'm saying now? Do we need to push the things to the limits for them to completely blow up and become basically shattered, broken, with a massive hole in it and deflated? So we can actually see the problem here? Or do we just say, well, there's definitely a problem, but I don't want to lose my mind. I'm not ready to snap yet. So I'm just going to pretend that's not going on and I'm just going to ignore it and I'm fine. Is that actually healing the problem? Is that getting to the root of it? Is that transforming it? Does our world support the process of transforming these these emotional energetic behaviors that we don't even half the time know is happening to us. We're all on some level. We got this going on on some level, okay? 
Okay, th this is super good. We're making progress. Your third eye is getting really stressed out right now because, <laughs> because we're shimmy shaking your energy field with this conversation and it's exactly the medicine you need. It's, it's honestly something I think we all need to look at. <laughs> so this is really powerful stuff here. Your third eye doesn't want to blow up. Your third eye doesn't want to snap. You don't know, you don't want to know what it's like um, for life to push you to the limits to break you. You want to be in control of yourself, in control of life. You want to be in control of your emotions, in control of your mind, your body, your thoughts, in control. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be in control of yourself? Is that the cookie cutter human or is that the the freelancer, um, inner child, the creative spirit. Is the creative spirit in control of itself? Does it need to be? Does the creative spirit need to be in control of itself? So you see the friction of society and the inner child, the creative spirit, and being in control of yourself, the adult, and now the loss of identity, although it's always there, it's just in control of itself, right? <laughs> How do you stop that? How do you stop that concept of being in control of yourself? This is a really important conversation. Your whole head is getting really hot. And it's it's what it's doing is just poking the bear of the ego, okay? That's all we're doing. We're just poking ego in the eyeball and saying, Hello, ego! Ego, how is this conversation treating you? like this conversation? Because ego is what what keeps us on, in control. Is what keeps us aware of society, the balance, the cookie cutter reality, the best way that we could fit into this world to be, to be able to survive in this world. So ego is actually helping us out, but it also can be very imprisoning of ourselves. And again, now we live in a world of duality. Am I free or am I imprisoned? And how do I set myself free? Will I ever know what it's like to be free? Because I feel like I'm still trying to control myself, hold myself back, trying to decide when it's the right time. That's not really going with the flow either. Do you see? You've got this, this going on in here. We all do, but this is what's wanting to come out of you. This conversation. And this conversation, just simply get the energy out and let me look at it and just feel about it. Not have to make any decisions or decide what is right or wrong. It's just getting this information out, this energy out of you, and just and just knowing about it. That's it. It's literally this. So I, I'm just chilling everything out with the whole concept that um, we can just talk about it, literally. We don't have to have all the answers today, but we can acknowledge that it feels like certain feelings that we have, and it's confusing to be human. It's confusing. And how do you really be the perfect human? I mean, seriously. Like, we're having to juggle so much. Especially when we're always trying to do the right thing. And life can punish us. Not just people, but life itself can feel like it's punishing us. Even when we're doing everything right. Man, just talking about it, you are just like, oh, you're releasing stuff. Um, it's coming out your heart, it's coming out your emotional gut right now, it's coming out your solar plexus, it's coming out the back of your head, the top of your head, the front of your head, it's, it's feel like circulation. Um, it feels like just sort of a gooey sludge that's just um, slowly coming out, kind of like a, like amber or honey, like something that's slowly, it's a sap that's slowly moving down the tree. It's just kind of like a sap coming out of your chakras. And it's comforting, actually. It's okay to release it. Um, it's wanting to come more out of your throat. You're okay not having an answer to this concept, this 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 problem, this thought, this idea, this perspective. You're okay not having a specific answer to it. You just simply want to get it out of you so you can just be aware of it, which is being aware of yourself. All this stuff is just, it's like, it's just a view. It's simply a view. And there's no right or wrong about this view. It is a view. And it intrigues your soul. 
but your soul also feels a bit um, contaminated by it as well. Like the view that we're exploring right now is poisonous, is toxic. But you want to be set free from that toxic view. You want to be truly your unique individual self that feels free, doesn't feel imprisoned, um, is free to flow. Like, and, and you can be whoever you want to be. Okay, there's some dark stuff that... Okay, hold on here. You're a very open-minded person, and I see that your soul... I mean, this is the human you. And so... Okay. I see you in astral making um, connections with other beings in astral that dimension really close to this dimension that we call our reality, okay? And so... There's These beings are a bit darker, you could say rough around the edges, um, questionable, questionable, okay? However, you aren't questioning them, you just simply want to learn and you want to grow. And, um, and whether they're manipulative or not, it's not what matters because you are such a thread of love that you aren't um, judging them. You aren't judging them at all. And which means that you're open-minded to literally every spirit in the universe. Every soul, every interaction, every situation, you're open-minded because your soul is so hungry for growth um, and for self-discovery and self-love. Like, your soul is hungry for more of these experiences. And I can't define the time, but it seems like when you were younger, okay, that you met what is like three beings in astral. Okay, this is... They remind me of Care Bears. They look like Care Bears. It's actually creepy. Because they're dirty Care Bears. They're Care Bears with dirt on them. And when I look at them, I feel really sad. Like, what happened to you? Why did this happen to you? You're not supposed to be dirty. What happened? And I experience you and you're looking and this is just the echo of the energy right now. So there's a conversation taking place. You cannot help them. Okay? That, that, that is clear. The energy says, which is my spirit guides, your spirit guides, higher self, etc. The energy says that you cannot help them. Let's see what you what you say about that. You can't stop looking at them. It's not whether you say yes or no. You're right, I can't because they have to help themselves. Um, or you know what? I can at least be supportive. I can just be a friend to them, and that is helping them. So whatever you say, I'm still helping them. Um, that you could respond any way. You could say anything you want. Like, um, screw you people. I'm totally helping them. I don't care what you say. Even if I become a dirty, filthy, nasty Care Bear myself, I'm going to be one of these and help them somehow, even if it transforms me. You don't say anything. You, you just continue to look at them, okay? And I hear again from the interview, very loud and clear, you cannot help them. They're showing me, um, <sighs> okay, hold on. The energy just shifted pretty hardcore there. This is more of a human scenario, something paralleling or mimicking. I see it's like, um, okay, hold on. It's still processing. It's a pretty big deal. It's another view, okay? Helping to understand why the message says you cannot help them. I see a person, this person is, they, they're, they're rough around the edges. Um, inside themselves, you could say there is a hole that will never be filled. Now you come along and you want to help them find peace inside themselves. So you start to share love, share love, share love, share love. They take, they take, they take, they take. Are you helping them? By sharing love with them? 
with their their hole that never will ever be filled. So if if the universe says you cannot help them, why would that you the universe say that? Is it actually helping a person that has a hole in them that can never be filled? You coming along and giving, 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 giving. They seem like they're so sincere. They're so thankful. But all they're doing is luring you closer and closer to their own personal strange spider web of a plan to trap you. So that you now are also a part of the whole that can't be filled. Not just the love you have to share, but your totality, you, your soul is also somehow trapped in their whole that will never be filled. There's a really loud message about there are some that you cannot help, period, because you just simply can't help them. No matter what you do, you will find in the end that leaving is the most important thing you could do for yourself because the most self-loving choice and the only way to actually help them is to have nothing to do with them. It's to love yourself and say, no, you figure it out, you dirty care bears. <laughs> you can say whatever you want. Something, it's like you get lured in by this. Get lured in by this. The dirty care bears. And you want to help them. But you're just becoming stuck with a problem that isn't even your problem. So the only way to really help them is to just leave them. You need to gravitate towards what is a place where there is a balance, um, a balance of giving and receiving. Because that is helping you and another at the same time in balance with each other. This is another hard concept for you. Because you're sure that you can be enough to help. You can do it. You can help them. And you will keep helping until you, that voice of, of telling you that you cannot help them just disappears. And now you're just going to help them. You, this still is going on, just so you know, you still have a connection with these dirty care bears f from when you were a kid, something of an astral travel, and you met them, and they felt like your friends, they felt like some beings that you could share your light with to help them gr get brighter on the inside, but all they did was to pull you into their trapped um, dark world, so they're going to bring you down to their level. It's a lot harder to stand at the top of the mountain to help people up to your level. But when you go down to somebody else's level to try to bring them up to your level, you're working on their level. You understand? So there, it's easier for them to encourage you to stay at their level than f for you to help get them up to the level where they actually want to be inside themselves. So they're on their own journey. So I'm called to sever I'm called to do something here because you still have an aspect of yourself in astral still with these dirty care bears, okay? This is getting really, really this is challenging, okay? Because it's very, it's like being in a fog, like a brain fog. Not even knowing how long you've been in a place. It's a bit scary. It's echoing to me the experience of not realizing you're on drugs. And, not, and then somebody continues to just keep you in the, a state of being on drugs. And you have no concept of time, of place, of self. And it's like been what could be defined as months could be years a complete loss of identity sense of self place time and you're just staying in a state of like a slight coma <laughs> 
but it's like a drugged up state where you're not aware of yourself. You're lost. This is hard on my heart. They show me a, a perfect piece of bubble gum. Then they show me the bubble gum's been chewed. Before the bubble gum was ever ready to be chewed. The bubble gum will never be what it once was. It's now defiled. It'll never be a fresh piece of bubble gum for anybody else. It's been used now. It's been chewed. It's got other people's saliva all over it. You just, in this weird fog, it's like being used. It's like being, um, I mean, it's like I see a woman and I see a woman being drugged up and then taken away from her life, from everybody she knows. And she's drugged up for so many days straight that she doesn't have a clue about time or place or what's going on. And now she's been raped so many times, she's not even in the same country anymore. Like, total loss of, of time, place, self, purpose of self that is now being used for somebody else's just dis disturbing needs. Is that helping people? And when people take from you, take your very... I mean, it's like taking your very soul from you. These Care Bears represent that. These dirty Care Bears represent that. That concept. That, again, says you cannot help them. Because on one level, approaching and wanting to help heal other souls. On another level... What's, what is this going to take for you to understand that some souls are not at that point or that place? And that their role is to take before their role will ever be to understand themselves and their relationship with the whole inside that can never be filled. And what will help awaken souls like this? Is it going to be you? You have to help the souls that are ready for your hand to sort of help them to the top of the mountain where you stand. You take them up to your level. You don't take yourself down to their level. And if they don't want to come up to your level, then you won't be able to help them. But they will help you down to their level. This is something important you need to be aware of. This brain fog place, this this isn't easy to get you out of this. And I feel like it's it's not just this life. It's almost like a, a weird shadow cast upon you over multi a multitude of different lives with similar experiences of making friends with the wrong people kind of thing and innocently doing this it was innocently done it's given it's just a crate it's a super hardcore headache developing right now i i just as far as we've gotten so far, there's there's a major message about the inner child here. Oh, it's, a, it's a lot processing. It's a little hard to talk to right now. <sighs> feeling stupid. Feeling dumb. Feeling like a low life. Feeling taken advantage of feeling like an idiot as I walk through a massive fog and it's on the level of brain fog I can't really think it's also on the level of being completely drugged up and having no concept of time place or identity drugged up for so many days straight that it's just completely lost
So I'm going to just separate from the part of you that's walking through the brain fog. And I'm going to stand here so I don't have to be just consumed by the experience. So I can be a, a better third party observer of what's going on. Oh man, this place is not good. It's like the, it's like a, a void of lost souls. It's not just you in here. There's a lot of souls lost in this fog. I gotta figure this out. What am I to do with this? Because trying to talk to you and help you understand where you are, who you are, what day it is, like anything, it just, you can't even hear me. It doesn't even, it doesn't even register. So, what I do is just touch you on your third eye, just, and I touch you in your heart. And now I step back into you. So we're again one and I'm part of your experience in this fog. But I'm in I'm the inspiration that is going to help you accomplish the impossible, which is to get you out of this. And these three care bears, they basically I see they're they look um, like they need help and kids that want are really sweet that want to help others that just hang out in the astral like they they visit with other souls like so I see that they lure kids into what is this place of being trapped and it has something to do with the hole inside themselves and kids see them and say oh I want to help you what can I do to help you and they sort of encourage kids to get lost in this other plane. And your soul is multidimensional, so you could you can be trillions of versions of yourself from tw trillions of different dimensions and times and places. Like the more infinite you see your soul, the more close to reality you'll ever be. So our human mind trying to conceive all this stuff, it's it's, it's like it's going to be really hard for human mind to conceive of it. That this is what I'm being shown, okay? I tell you that you need to... You remember those three Care Bears? You remember wanting to help them? You remember the voice saying you cannot help them? Do you remember that? This is what happened when you tried to help them. This is where you wound up. Were you able to help them? Or were they able to help you by challenging you? Do you want to leave this place? Do you want to go home? You start to say, I hate them. <laughs> I hate those Care Bears. <laughs> like, okay, well, that's a good start. I mean, it's like you are venting emotions that you've been in a brain fog without, like, kind of numb and neutral to everything, and now you're starting to feel angry. This is actually progress. This is really good progress. And it's like, okay. You hate them. Okay, what else? I want to get out of here. Okay. That's all I needed to hear. Because now you're out of here. You say, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to make. I don't, I don't, it's like, it's inconceivable to figure out how to cope with the reality of what all of this meant. And you're really angry at God for not, for not getting you out of that sooner. And I echo what was said, you cannot help them, but you still tried to help them. So what else was God supposed to do? God's not going to go down to their level either. <laughs> you had to understand the lesson. You had to experience the lesson for yourself. Now you're experiencing what's on the other side of the lesson.
You say I'm tired. And I just want to go home. And you close your eyes and you don't want to see anymore. And I tell you no. You're going to open your eyes and you're going to see and you're not tired. And I show you something that is nice to look at. I remind you that you're an infinite soul. And that this is just a blink of an eye. And even less than that. Of an experience. Of multitudes of experiences that your soul has had. And I'm taking you to a higher dimension. So that you can feel the truth of yourself. And you don't feel heavy. You don't feel bogged down. You don't feel like you're in a fog. And this helps to ignite your true capacity. It's just giving you a massive headache again. Because... Because there's so much awareness happening. And you're going to a higher dimension and looking back at what your memory is of that. And you feel like really sad because children are such vulnerable beings. And especially kids that want to help others can be lured into a trap and then lost forever in a way. And that is very sad. You're sad that, that those experiences exist, that um, bright hearts are taken advantage of. So I take you up to a much higher dimension. So you're even more at peace with this because that's still kind of holding on to the past type feeling. But you are brighter. You are able to see. You're not resisting opening your eyes to see. You feel more energized. You feel lighter. But you're still um, close enough to the memory that it and to being human that it is a bit heavy and lingering sadness. So we're going to a higher dimension where you're going to feel more understanding okay this is um an interesting place it's kind of a place for for pondering and it feels like a very large place where s spirits go and they just go and it's infinite time and they just ponder their memories. Not from a place of infinite awareness, but from a place of more of a dimensional um, disconnect. But it's it's philosophical, it's peaceful, it's deep, it's it's a harmonious place to just ponder. And it it's souls like there's souls that really like to do this. They really like this experience. And your higher self is showing me that you in this place of pondering is sending all this warm energy of timelessness and uh, peacefulness, time to think, time to process. You're sending that information back to you here on the earth plane as yourself right now. You're not ready to leave the place of pondering, but you're able to look at it. You don't feel heavy from it. What you're pondering is how do we help the world has characters like the dirty care bears in it but how do we help them i mean you're asking you're pondering this how do we help them what's healthy about this is you're not you're not engaged in the action of helping the dirty care bears directly you're in a place of pondering and looking at the bigger picture of the world um, and taking, exploring this concept from what is at the top of the mountain instead of swooping down into the dimensional problem areas <laughs> and trying to work through it as you're being lost in it, okay? <laughs> You, what you do is you close your eyes and you light a candle in the hearts of each one of the Care Bears from a distance. You don't become the, the candle for them, for them. 
you it's like praying for them so here you are in the safe dimension pondering and it's very peaceful here it's very tranquil um, and you're projecting love to them and you're putting love inside them to help them you're planting an energetic candle within them to help guide them to what it is they're looking for in order to sort of quench their thirst or fill the hole within them and you say why is it better for me to help people at a distance than for me to help them directly how could that ever be better? And I, I appear here and I tell you that y y and you are also these Care Bears. <sighs> so there isn't anything that is ever indirect. And every prayer you've ever made has is known about. Every soul will know about your prayers for them. Even if it was just between you and God or you and your higher self, like it was silent inside of you. Every soul in the whole universe knows about your prayers for every other soul. And prayers are woven energy to try to support, try to help. Especially when they come from a place of unconditional love, without judgment, without expectation without saying what you think is best. That person needs to um, love other people. You could say, say, I'm praying for this person. I simply want to place a candle in their heart to help guide them through their life, to help them um, find more illumination inside themselves, to help them access more love inside themselves. You can simply say it like that. You say, but I want to help the world. I want to help people. I want to help the, the dirty care bears of the world. I feel like I can help. So what I do is, I, I this is what I'm called to do, okay? They're asking me to, what is... Clear your connection with really dark dimensional places. Because you're trying to help help really lost souls. Because they're taking you to the place of lost souls because they're in the place of lost souls. <laughs> and so you are... So I'm, I'm called to... There's like so many souls that are, you could say are lost souls, but they aren't. But they would hear you. They would receive you. They would respect you. They wouldn't have a, an empty, like a infinite hole that could never be fill, filled. They just need guidance. They need inspiration. They need um, ideas. They need somebody who cares, you know? There's so many souls like this out there. It, it's disconnecting you from a very dark dimension. And... You don't, it's like your inner child really wants to help really dark dimensions, but it, th now it's filling you with more dark energy than you really need to be working with. And th it's like God's voice saying you cannot help them. It's just, it's like, I'm just disconnecting you from that because it's going to give you access to more light, more of the energy you want in your life, and it's going to give you access to fulfillment. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you opportunity to actually help people who you can reach. And they are happy to um, have a helping hand to help them up to your level. And it's going to help you stay bright, okay? Because when you start going down, you start getting dimmer. You can take your light down into those dark places, but how long can you stay that bright before it's very influential it's like hanging around a negative person day after day after day after day after day after day after day. It's very toxic, you know? It does get to you eventually. Versus hanging around somebody who's super positive all the time can be very influential. Especially when you want to be around positive people. And trying to help a negative person that just wants to be negative all the time. It's going to just suck you into that negative world because they want more people like themselves.
you're starting to feel so much better. <sighs> that whole, the, all the meaning with those Care Bears and the Lost Souls place, and, and you pondering still in connection with that, now disconnecting you from that dimension, that experience, vibrationally, because it's like a weight you're carrying. It's like a like a string that is connecting your heart to a dark the lost soul's dimension that you're just like hauling that weight everywhere you go and still trying to be as bright as possible like let the weight go just let that place go and you be as bright as you can be which is actually going to really help many 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 people and eventually all of this as we all start getting brighter um this will shift. This will shift in its own divine time. And I'm going to let you decide what all this means to you. Because there's people in the lost souls world that are reaching their hand back to be helped to the top of the mountain where you stand. But there's people that are going to manipulate you as well, as they are also manipulated. And it's going to be hard to know the difference. But that's what I'm called to do for you, okay? Look for the people who are reaching their hand back. Look for the people that care as much about you as you care about them. You needed this conversation in your energy field. You needed disconnected from that lost soul's place that was weighing you down majorly. You needed reconciliation for what that whole weird Care Bear thing was about. You had other lifetimes connected to that as well. Like being dragged through the mud in certain lifetimes. Because again, you're attracted to wanting to help lost souls that are just pulling you into their dark world. And now the worst is happening to you. How do you know the difference? How can you tell the difference? I want to bring it back to the original conversation. They're really amplifying that a lot of this has to do with your inner child. It has to do with the balance of love. Let's take a look at the scene again with your nose in the hole I in the circle. I just want to see how this feels now. I tell you to take a deep breath that you are your own resistance and I want you to turn around I want you to look at all your classmates and I want you to look at your teacher you actually look like a bird you look like a humanoid bird you even have a beak and your face is like a human face but your nose and mouth is a beak you even have human hair you're really skinny and elongated. And there's nobody in the class and there's no teacher. And there's nothing that you did wrong. And this is really hard for you to cope with turning around to face everyone and there's nobody here to face because you in the end punished yourself then and how this ties into these this other conversation is you fell for a trap the trap took you into a dark place it's done this so there's multiple lives where this has happened to you okay and you hate yourself for being so stupid. <laughs> it's literally what you're saying inside your energy field. And so now you're trying to just love yourself for, for what happened. You're trying to forgive yourself for falling into a trap. This is really hardcore. trying to be okay with your own identity or you're starting to look more like a human but you're really you look like a, a weird man that like a, a fully grown adult male face on that's slightly stretched 
and is on a childlike body and it, it's really like deranged looking it's morbid it's pale white it looks sickly it looks like it's gonna puke Again, it's okay to be okay with yourself. It's okay to be okay with yourself. It's okay to be okay with yourself. Boy, you're worn out. You're sinking into a dark dimension. I'm I'm going to have to see I can reach you. You're reaching back. I I'm going to get you out of this. <laughs> because you yourself want to overcome this, you simply need help, okay? You weigh like tons and tons and tons of weight. I tell you to let go of all this weight and don't judge yourself and don't judge anybody else. Don't judge the things that happened. Don't judge how wrong it was. You're, you're letting go of layer after layer after layer after layer and you're just a tiny little ball, just a tiny white ball. And that's all that remains of you after all of this. You shed all of that. The classroom and everything is part of a layer that you shed. And I'm taking this tiny little ball up to a much higher dimension. Still working on letting it all go. I'm helping you get into a place of lots of light. It's starting to clear. It's all starting to clear. Like it never really related to your soul. Like it never happened. But all of it, it's all transmuted. So it's all transmuting. So it's, it's part of your soul journey, but it's not weighing you down anymore, you see? You're worthy of love. You're worthy of loving yourself. You're worthy of receiving love from others. I see you now as one of the dirty care bears that lost your way. And you have memories of having been down that path and you want to help what you call your soulmates because you've been there, done that, and you want to help them. It's really hard to accept some of the lessons souls are going through when they're so lost. And a part of you is just, it's like you're working through parallel lives of having once been lost yourself. And you need time with God, like you need time in the source energy. You need time to just, because you're still pondering, you're still like... You're still really sad about a lot. And so I'm just taking the little pearl that you are to a place of pure light with angels and your higher self and your spirit guides and lots of beings here um, that are here to support you. And just, it's like an emotional venting. It's sadness. It's a lot of emotions, a lot of lives. P self punishment. It's just, it's just. I mean, you were doing this uh, meditation to forgive yourself, right? So um, that's that's again what this is. It's just a ceremony of of love, self love. It's just forgiving yourself, forgiving others. It's just letting it all go. But it's all. It also can feel like it can feels very sad or very angry or very confused as to why this is existing. You know, very. It can feel many ways, and that's fine. Because this is all being transmuted through your human body in this lifetime right now. In this pearl. Which is in another dimension of pure light and love that's helping you with this. Telling you this incredible amount of energy weight that you're releasing here. It's impressive. Now it's like you're going into a meditation. 
So it, it is like a rest state for the soul. So you're going into a rest state for your soul, um, which is basically to process everything and catch up with yourself. I just say, I am free. I have you say, I am free. It's just acknowledging that you're always free. Always free. It's a light thing to say. It's a breezy, easygoing thing to say. It transmutes heavy weight. I am free. I am free. I am free. Pretty awesome. <laughs> it's really incredible. Mm. Jennifer, thank you so much for this. I'm just coming back to myself here and disconnecting from your energy field. Okay. <laughs> thank you again, Jennifer. Thank you all for watching. Um, thank you all for sharing in the comments. I hope that you all got an opportunity to clear something within yourself from this session. If any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at Abby Normals Wisdom Quest. And I have two other YouTube channels. So check me out at Abby Normal or Zodiac Energy Readings. Okay, thank you all again. Have a great day.